also how it's possible to add some information to it using components. By implementing a system, it's so possible to add a behavior to these entities. But before discussing this, do you know where are stored the components in Amethyst? For who of you that didn't saw my first video of this series, the components in Amethyst are stored inside the storages and each component type has a storage. What this means is that the systems in Amethyst can take the component storages and can perform some operation like insert or remove or modify the components that are already inside. Taking as example the transformation components, we can modify them by iterating all the stored components and applying some modification. The result of this operation is that all the transformation of our scene uh, are modified. For example, the camera are moved, the lights are moved and the spheres are moved because all these entities use a transformation component. So, if we would like to move only the spheres, we need a way to filter out um, the components and perform the modification only on those. In Amethyst, we have the function join that gives the possibility to take multiple storage and joining them together, it returns an iterator that has only the entities with all the storages that you defined in the join function. Returning to our scene, if we would like to modify only the sphere transformation, uh, we can see that the spheres have the handle mesh and so by taking the handle storages and uh, by filtering using the join, we can apply the modification only to the spheres. But now, what happens if I would like to add another entity, which is the cube entities, that instead to go down, it go up. So it performed the opposite operation. As you can see now, just by introducing another entity is not enough because even the cube entity has the handle mesh component and so there is no distinction between the spheres and the cubes and the systems apply the same transformation to both of them. So what we have to do is to introduce two new components which are the sphere component and the cube component. Now I have to modify the first system in order to join not more with the handle mesh component but join with the sphere component in order to apply the modification to only the spheres. And now in order to implement the behavior for the cubes I have to duplicate the sphere system calling it cube system and apply uh, the behavior to the cubes and the result is this one. So perfect, we are to the end. We saw how it's possible to add a behavior, what is the join function. So that's it. Well, not really. There is something more to add, because this code is not so good. Indeed, here we are trying to implement a game, a simulation, using an object-oriented approach. In fact, you can see that I have created the sphere component, the cube components, the cube system, and so on. So I am referring the object with the object naming, and this is not nice if you are working with ECS. Using this concept in this environment, we are forced to duplicate the system to even implement two systems that perform exactly the same operation. So instead, to improve this situation, what we have to do is to not look anymore to the mechanics of the object, but rather we have to extrapolate the functionality to add to the entire game in order that our systems can be reused to multiple scenarios. So rather what we have to do is to implement the motion system and implement another component that is called motion. Thanks to this system, the result is exactly the same but with the exception that I have just one system that perform all the operation, all the motion operation, the benefits here are multiple. And one of those are that I can define the direction of the entities directly during the entity creation. 
This means that I can apply this motion system even to the camera or to the light or even to another entity and I don't need to specifically implement another system for another entity. If in future I will need to modify or for example fix a bug or even better implement a new uh, feature for this motion system, this feature get implemented for all the entities that are using this system. So remember, don't look anymore to the functionality of the object, but look the functionality of the game. And so this is the real end of the video. And not only, this is also the end of this basic of Amethyst. I will open another series where I will talk about some advanced features of Amethyst. I will talk about how to use the physics in Amethyst. And also guys, remember that if you have any question uh, regarding Amethyst, Godot or any other question, please leave me a comment below. And if I can, I will be happy to answer it. It's everything. Bye!